White House National Security Communications Advisor John Kirby accidentally replying all, revealing how he really feels about a Fox News digital press inquiry about concerns of four military veterans, including Florida Congressman Corey Mills, that were critical of the Biden-Harris administration's botched Afghanistan withdrawal. Kirby writing in response, quote, obviously no use in responding. A handful, quote, handful of vets indeed, and all of one stripe. He later followed up with a Fox News digital reporter saying, quote, clearly I didn't realize you were on the chain. Kirby's email coming on September 11th, and a day after the 13 U.S. service members killed in the Abbey Gate bombing were honored posthumously with congressional gold medals, Congress's highest honor. I want to bring in part of the story, Florida Congressman Corey Mills. He's a member of the House Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committees. Congressman Mills, your reaction to that exchange? Well, you know, it's not anything that is surprising when you think about this administration who has shown absolutely zero respect to our military and to our veterans, uh, even prioritizing things like DEI over increased lethality readiness and being properly equipped. And again, this is John Kirby, who also said that, yeah, it was somewhat chaotic when it came to the Afghan withdrawal until the actual video is released with people hanging off the planes where almost 60, 70 percent who were unvetted didn't have the necessary biometrics and medical before they were being brought to the, the U.S. But also, this is an administration who, during two State of the Unions and through all other multiple opportunities, never even acknowledged our 13 brave heroes who lost their life and their Gold Star families. It was President Trump who was actually the one who was out there they're dealing with, you know, these gold star mothers and fathers and who are actually inviting them to Mar-a-Lago, going out to the actual sites of their children and making sure that he showed the necessary respect on the anniversaries. But, uh, you know, for him to say a handful of vets just goes to show what little concern and what little respect they have for military veterans abroad. Do you think he should apologize? Apologize to you? Maybe you don't care about that. You're, you're, t you're a tough guy. Maybe this doesn't bother you. But do you think that in general he should just apologize for the way that he was so flippant about what was a horrific moment in history for our country? Well, he should absolutely apologize to the Gold Star families and to the veterans who served abroad. Look, we have to keep in mind that right after this failed botch withdrawal by the Biden-Harris regime, that we immediately saw a spike in suicide rates of our military veterans. You know, we talk about our 22-a-day suicide rate, which is something that's very serious. But we have to keep in mind that right after this, our suicide rates increased because you have many military Afghan veterans, combat veterans, who were saying, why did I go over there for 20-plus years? Why did I lose family? My brothers, my sisters, those who I'd served with, and what was the real purpose when millions of dollars are still going to the Taliban, as we found on our Foreign Affairs Committee. So, yeah, I think that this whole administration owes the 13 Gold Star families an apology, but they own veterans who served over there an apology and an explanation. All right. I, I, let's talk about this report about the withdrawal of Afghanistan. It's a damning report. So House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McCall, who joined us earlier this week on the program, he is now scheduled a markup next week to hold Secretary of State Blinken in contempt of Congress. Now, Blinken failed to respond to a subpoena issued last week for his testimony about the Afghanistan withdrawal, again, on the heels of this blockbuster report. Now, the House Foreign Affairs Committee also released its report on its three-year investigation on the withdrawal. That came out earlier this week. You're a member of House Foreign Affairs, uh, Congressman, so I want to get your reaction to this. Yeah, look, they continue to try and say that they've been compliant and they've tried to work with us in transparency, but we've actually had to not only subpoena, but threatened to hold in contempt the Secretary of State when he wouldn't provide the dissent cables, which showed 23 diplomats had warned the State Department about their strategy and even told them that Americans would die if they went forward. It's the same thing as the Armed Services Committee, where Secretary of Defense Austin said they had no credible intel, but I've seen the intel reports day on, day on, day on that said, Moving into the city of Kabul, all planning and prep has been prepared. Explosive bombers should be prepared and a bolo for this vehicle and this individual. So there was credible intel there and warning signs, but they played politics over strategy, and that's what resulted in the death of these 13 Gold Star heroes. Well, Congressman, I think one of the things that was just so, I guess just to see it in black and white, I mean, we, we had seen this reports about this, was the fact that, that the top military advisors to President Biden I mean, from, from, from the t top down, told him, don't, 
withdrawal, not, you know, wait. That's right. There was no reason to leave Afghanistan. And then the way in which they did it, leaving Bagram behind, which, of course, this week the administration right. has defended. But, you know, that decision, well, it didn't matter. Bagram wasn't going to, you know, it would have been too dangerous for American personnel to keep Bagram secure, et cetera, et cetera. So do you think that there should be more follow-up on this report? There needs to be follow-up. There also needs to be accountability. Not a single person has lost their command as a result of this. Not a single person in the State Department has been dismissed or terminated as a result of this. And we know for a fact that this is absolutely against doctrine to remove your military before you remove your civilians. That's why Americans were also abandoned and left behind. Look, I know this because I helped to do the first overland rescue of Americans out of Afghanistan after the fall of Afghanistan, which was a woman and her three children from Amarillo, Texas. So absolutely, we need accountability. Not not just responsibility to say, I'm sorry, my fault, mea culpa. We need people to actually have accountability so they can get peace and they can get some type of a, a feeling of closure that their sons and their daughters didn't die in vain. I, I remember your actions uh, that year uh, in 2021 when this all happened um, and the fact that you and many other in, others in the military community took it upon yourselves to try and get the people that were loyal to us, not just Americans, but our are the people that supported us in Afghanistan, the Afghans themselves, that would risk their lives to help um, right. us uh, in our 20-year war in that country. Uh, before you go, I do want to ask you about this. There is this report that SEAL Team 6, of course, the unit that killed Osama bin Laden, they reportedly had been preparing for a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Apparently, they've been training for more than a year for this. And China's defense ministry just announced their joint naval and air drills with Russia's military. Uh, and, 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 of course, I have to add, U.S. and Chinese military commanders did speak by phone earlier this week for the first time in years, uh, trying to avoid, quote, a miscalculation. But I want to ask you about this. I mean, look, the, the fact that, that this comes out of SEAL Team 6 is a bit surprising to me, considering that that is a group that is always veiled in secrecy for good reason. And now this report is out there. Look, I don't think it's any surprise that Indo-PACOM is continuing to ramp up its efforts ensuring the defense of Taiwan or the China Straits is going to look to be uh, utilized. And so uh, whether it was uh, previously under Admiral Aquilino, whether it was against, you know, what 7th Fleet has continued to prayer for, we do this constantly where we prepare for different types of potential scenarios. And we do that with all of our special operations, whether it be SOCOM, USASOP, or uh, any of the others. And so um, this is just kind of part of the drills. And again, this is the same thing that China does when they were practicing the blockades right there to look at how they would actually have taken over Taiwan for the unification process. So while it's surprising that the you know leak came out, it's not surprising that these types of trainings continue on while we continue our preparations to be a national security and global leader when we have invested interests that impact America, Americans, or Americans interest. All right. Well, Congressman Corey Mills, we appreciate your time. We know that you're going to be working through the weekend uh, as they try to figure out, you and your colleagues, what to do about this continuing resolution and the future and where this goes. So we'll be looking forward to hearing more about those, uh, those talks this weekend, sir.